So we've talked about the general equation of a circle, how to calculate it and how we can use that to calculate the centre of a circle and the radius. What we're going to do here is I'm going to set you a couple of questions revolving around this. I want you to pause the video, have a crack at these and then come back and check your answers with the working presented here. So here you go. First question, I want you to find the centre and radius of the circle given by the general equation x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y minus 11 equals 0. Second question, I've given you a circle's general equation, but I've kept the point C out, i.e. it's plus C. I've told you a point lies on it, find C. And the last question, slightly more complex, you've got two circles within each other, there's a centre point there, they're touching at various points, I want you to find the equation of the smaller of the two circles. So, pause the video, have a crack at these. So the first question, find the radius of the circle and the centre when its equation is given by this. So x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y minus 11 equals 0. Now remember, our general equation of a circle was our x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus our 2fy plus c equals 0. We were able to use that formula and that form to calculate the centre and the radius. Now remember, our centre was given by c as negative g, negative f, and our radius we could calculate by doing the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So I just need to figure out each of these parts, and I'm golden. So the first one, I can look at it and figure out that 2g is equal to negative 2, so I know g is equal to negative 1, and 2f is equal to negative 6, so f is equal to negative 3. Using this information, I can simply write down that C, my centre, is equal to negative G, negative F, which means it's then given by negative of this, so 1, and negative of this, comma 3. So there you go, my centre is at 1, 3. I can then use the information to get my radius, so I know that R is equal to the square root of G squared plus F squared minus C. So it's the square root of G squared, so my negative 1 squared, plus F squared, so plus my negative 3 squared, minus c, but in this case I know that c is equal to the last term here, so it's negative 11. So it's minus negative 11. Calculate all these bits here, I get the square root of 1 plus 9 plus 11, so remember it's minus minus, 1 plus 9 plus 11, 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 11 gives me a radius of the square root of 21. So there you go, I've got my radius, I've got my centre, just using the general formula for the general equation of a straight line and equating all the parts up. We have to remember this is how we answer a question like this. Second question, a circle has this equation here with a plus c in it, so I've not got a value there. If the point t, which is at 6, negative 8, lies in the circle, I want to find c. Well when we've got something like this, we know that this point is on the circle regardless. So if I've got an x and a y, I could substitute it in here and I'd get the equivalent answer. I, if I had all the terms and I've got my plus c, if I put this point in here, I should get 0. So I can use this information and substitute this in and then get a simple little equation to figure out what c is. So if t is at 6, negative 8, x is equal to 6, y is equal to negative 8, I can substitute them in and work it out from there. So I get 6 squared plus negative 8 squared, take away 4 times 6, plus 2 times negative 8, plus c equals 0. So there you go, I've set up the values, I've got my numerical bits in, I just need to simplify it and then calculate c from this. So I know 6 6s are 36, so it's going to be 36, plus 8 8s, well 8 8s are 64, take away 4 6s, well 4 6s are 24, plus 2 times negative 8, well, positive times a negative gives you a minus, so it becomes minus 2 times 8, which is 16, plus c equals 0. So I've got to simplify the whole thing here, and I get my equation. So 36 plus 64 is 100. Take away 24 gives me 76. Take away another 16 gives me 60. So 60 plus c is equal to 0. I can simply say then that I know that c is equal to negative 60. So that's the part there, if I put it in my equation here, I'd have the proper general equation of this circle in the form I want it. And the last one, I've got a smaller circle inside a larger circle. The larger circle has a centre, see at negative 2, negative 1 is shown here. 
smaller circle goes through C, so look at it here, it's actually cutting through the point C, and both circles touch at this point here, T, which is at 4, 3, find the equation of the smaller circle. Now remember, for the equation of the circle, if we think back to when we first did it, it's x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So to get that for the smaller circle, first I need ab, which we know is the centre, so we can imagine the centre located somewhere about there, and I need my radius, so I need my r squared from that. Well, to do that, first thing we can do is imagine that we know c to t is equal to the radius of the bigger circle, which is the diameter of the smaller circle from this. So if I calculate this radius here and half it, then I know I've got the radius of the smaller circle. I also know, however far along and up I move in both of these, it's the same. So I can find the centre of the smaller circle by finding the midway point of the C and T. Once I've got that information, I can simply put together my equation. So let's start with the radius. We know it's going to be equal to the square root of the difference between the x's squared plus the difference between the y's squared. So in this case, it's going to be 4, take away the negative 2 squared, plus a 3, take away the negative 1 squared. That will give me the radius of the big circle. So in this case, I know that's going to be the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared. 6 6 are 36. 4 4 are 16. 36 plus 14 gives you 52. So it's square root of 52. Now, that's the radius of the big circle. What I then need to do is get the radius of the smaller circle. Let's call that R2. And I know that's going to be equal to a half times the R, which is a half times the square root of 52. So I know that I've got my radius and my smaller circle there. Now I just need to find the midpoint. Well, the midpoint of C and T, again, let's call that M. We know that's going to be equal to the X1 plus X2 divided by 2. And the Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. Doing that will give me the midway point. So X1 plus X2, so I've got 4 plus negative 2 over 2, comma 3 plus negative 1 over 2. 4 plus negative 2 over 2 gives me 2 over 2, which is 1. 3 plus negative 1 over 2 gives me 2 over 2 again, which is 1. So I know this point here, the centre of the smaller circle, is at 1, 1. I've got the information I need. Now I can just stick it all in. So I've got x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals r squared, so it's equal to this, so a half root 52 squared. Simplify all of this out, multiply at the brackets here, I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals a half times the root of 52 squared. Well, that's equal to a quarter times 52. So a quarter of 52, that gives me 13. So there you go, I've got all the bits, I just need to plug it on the one side now, set it equal to 0, and I get x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 2y. I've got plus 1 plus 1, but then I'm taking away the 13, minus 11 equals 0. So there you go, equation of this circle in the form of the general equation of a circle from that. Using these bits of information, we're able to calculate things. We need to remember all the key parts of the general equation of a circle. So things like being able to get the radius and the centre point straight from the equation itself. Remembering that centre is equal to negative g, negative f. Coefficient of the x part is the 2g. Coefficient of the y part is the 2f. And a radius can be given by the g squared plus f squared. Take away c and then you take the square root of it. All these key bits of information come in handy and useful, and we can use that to get other properties and relate it to other circles and other bits of information.